Welcome to the Theotech Podcast. I'm Chris, and today I'm joined by my co-founder and little sister, Natasha, as well as our producer, Alan, who's been doing all of the awesome video and audio that you've been watching for the Theotech Podcast. And today we're going to do a top three episode. We're going to talk about three memorable things from this past year, and then we're all going to share one thing that we're hoping for in the new year. So we're hoping that you're going to really enjoy this episode, and then of course, please share what you are hoping for in the new year in the comments below. So, um, since this is, uh, we're going to do a top three, I'd actually like to let uh, maybe Natasha share first her top three memories from 2017. Uh, so, please share, Tosh. Okay, well, I mean, Christmas just happened, and it was kind of a big one for us, I felt like, because uh, we both separately had decided, or had thought of um, hosting Christmas, when we'd never really done that before. For our family. For our family. And friends, yeah. yeah for our family and friends. <clears throat> Typically, it's always been like, oh, mom and dad's house, or oh, another relative is hosting. But this year, we decided that we would do it. And that was kind of interesting just because we had separately both felt like maybe we should be hosting Christmas, um, which was cool. And so, but then the other part that was actually really cool to me for Christmas this year was that we ended up inviting like 40 people what? <laughs> to the house uh, and hosting all of them. And that was kind of scary because I think just for ourselves, like the idea of hosting people has always been kind of hard. Because we were always like, oh, no, you know, what if they don't like the food? What if, you know, they think our house is messy or not nice or whatever it is? And so there's all these other fears that we'd always kind of felt but maybe not made explicit. But then this year we just kind of punched through it and just decided we're going we're gonna to host it. Yeah, so that's your one of your big memories. Yeah. And it went really well. Like, we were pretty calm. Everybody had a good time. They love the food. We are we're from Indonesia. Our parents are from Indonesia, and so the food was all Indonesian food mostly. And it, like, yeah, people were really excited because you don't always get that. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, my house is not a mansion, so forty people actually is <laughs> a lot. Like, I was yeah. surprised that we fit comfortably. We rearranged all the furniture and everything. Yeah, that was actually, but it was a lot of fun because like once it worked, we're like, ah, we could do this. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I think the main important thing too is like everyone's having a lot of fun. And that was, like, one thing that I was, like, super happy to see. Like, even you guys are having fun, too. Yeah. That was something that, stressed. like, I was worried about you guys. I was, like, constantly <laughs> asking, like, what's your stress level? I'm, like, you guys feeling okay? But then, like, during it, I think you guys were, like, having just as much fun as everyone who was invited. So, I thought you guys pulled it off really well. <clears throat> nice. Thanks, Alan. Yeah. My favorite part was where you, Jeremiah, and myself... Got to play some music together. Yeah, that was fun. We got to we did, jam. We did a little Christmas caroling in the house, and everybody like followed along. Yeah, so fun. we have this like one music major on cello, so he was really good, and then Alan was great on guitar, and then I just kind of whipped up my violin and played the melody. But uh, I, it was fun. I would do it again. Yeah, I wish we got a video of it. Uh, you guys should I mean, do it again. We might should splice a video of it right here. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, there's into the podcast. Of people who recorded you because you yeah. can see how many cameras were just like, oh, we yeah. have a performance going on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that one was cool. That was, that was you know, obviously that happened less than a week ago. But that was a big, fresh memory for me. I think that was a milestone for us, just kind of in growing up and learning to host people and uh, planning out a party, I guess, uh, of that kind of size and all that. So that was cool. That was one area that I think we grew in um, as people uh, to host others. Okay, so to keep this awesome. interesting, let's actually each of us share one at a time. Yeah. yeah and then that way we kind of cycle through yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, let's do that. We're figuring this out as we go. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so why don't you go next, Alan? Oh, me? Well, yeah. we're going in order. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, I need more time to think. <laughs> <laughs> We've got notes on the table. We're like constantly scrolling. You see, if you see our heads like bob down, that's because we're like frantically thinking about like, what did I forget? Anyways, um, I just want to like recap this whole year by say like um, I feel that I've grown a lot like in maturity wise and also just um, have been able to be a little more independent and have been like able to like um, act upon certain instincts and just um, go for things that I feel like are right for me um, even if that's contrary to what like either my parents think or like what um, some of my leaders think but um, <clears throat> I think, in general, uh, this year has been really great in terms of just, like, developing and growing me. 
Um, particularly one thing that happened this year is uh, I started working again. Uh, I don't want to bore you guys with the uh, details, but it is technically the boring office job. The B.O. Boring office. Body B -B -O odor? B.O.J. Bodge. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Body order. laughs> I was thinking of an acronym. Um, yeah, I definitely don't want to get into the details, but I've been really fortunate to have, you know, work and have, like, insurance and all this stuff, and I've been able to work with a team that's really great, um, managers are really great, and, um, uh, it's really flexible there, too, so I've been able to, uh, do other stuff on the side, which I'll get to in a bit, um, but it's definitely taught me about consistency, you know, waking up every day, getting on time, you know, like, um, doing your job, and, like, making sure, like, deadlines are met. Um, it's a really good way for me to just like just be like on top of things and just be in the groove every week um, And then also just realize how precious my time is too because 40 hours of my time is just like gone So like the rest of my time I'm just like how can I maximize this to like do other things I love or like hang out with people that I like um, <clears throat> All that stuff so Cool it's yeah. a job Yes <clears throat> um, My I guess the recent thing that I was really happy about is that I think my mom got me an Instant Pot oh. uh, for Christmas, oh. <laughs> and, and that's been a game changer because I've been really insecure about my cooking. You know, I might cook for myself sometimes and eat it and feel okay, but I would never feel like good enough about it to want to invite anybody over to eat it too. I would just buy food. Um, but this food technology, this Instant Pot, has really changed the game because you can just follow the instructions. It regulates the heat so perfectly, and we made a couple things like a pork roast, a beef stew, and some other stuff, and just by following the instructions, you get something really delicious mm. without having to use any sauces or anything aside from like salt, pepper, you know, oil vinegar, all the basics. And uh, it was good enough to the point where I was like, oh man, like this is this is a whole new level. Like I actually want to cook now. I actually want to invite people to also eat it because I myself like it. Um, and that's a real big deal uh, I, because I've always been the type that was, you know, the typical techie who were just like, oh, I'll just eat out every day and just or, oh, eat I'll out for eat dinner. Ramen. Or ramen. ramen. <laughs> this is startup oh life. <laughs> we eat, we eat shin cup, we eat uh, indomie, we eat other kinds of ramen. There's with, you know, a those... cabinet upstairs just like full of it. I'm like, how do you guys? <laughs> oh, so good. But uh, I was not paid to do the Instant Pot ad, but if you want to buy one, I can add an affiliate link, um, <laughs> and that will help Theotech. So, uh, no, I really I really love how, how it makes it so easy to make delicious food. And it's funny, I think the future is going to be where you don't even need, like, a stovetop anymore. You just need a hole that fits an Instant Pot, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you can put your food oh, in and cook. Shoot, yeah, because it fun. just, it saves space, it's so easy to clean, it's just like that one metal... Uh, pot, I guess, that you can take out and clean stainless steel. Yep. And uh, and then when you're waiting for it to pressure cook, you can just clean everything else so that basically you're done. By the time the food's done, you're done. You're just ready to eat. You have no more cleanup that you got to do. So, yeah, it's it's been a game changer. I'm looking forward to seeing how it's going to change my eating and health habits uh, for the coming year. Yeah. What else? And hospitality. <laughs> yeah. What else would you want to make with the Instant Pot? Like, we've, we've already tried a few recipes, like the top you know, the top four or five, that when you first get your Instant Pot and you go and Google Instant Pot recipes, like, we've done a bunch of them. Yeah. So, like, what's something else that you'd want to try to make? I still want to make an Indian curry. Okay. Uh, which we haven't done yet. Yeah. That'd and um, I want to make a dessert. Uh, oh, we yeah. haven't done any desserts yet. Like cheesecake or something. Well, like apple filling. Can you guys make apple filling? I think and, like, so. Like the apple pie? Yes, and, and we, have, we have a lot of apples from Christmas. We can use that. Uh, <laughs> that would be really cool if you guys can pull that off. Okay. Invite me yeah, over because I'm going to try that. Yeah, um, try. And then I don't know what a third thing would be. I don't have anything off the top of my head. But we'll look at recipes. You can definitely make like soups and stuff like that with that too. Yeah, we've already done a couple times. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a big deal for me too because this guy like really doesn't cook. And I'm just like, <laughs> nope. wow. Like, he went from like someone who's like not confident that he doesn't want to try to like, I want to try every time. Mm -hmm. And that's like a huge thing for me. And I'm actually also more willing to buy <clears throat> ingredients now. Because I think before when the food's oh. not going to be good, it's like you don't want to spend a lot of money on good ingredients because you just feel like, uh, like it's I'm not, not going to turn out. I'm not going to like yeah. it anyway. Why would I waste my money? But now it's like, no, let's go buy like, you know, the eight ounce box of cremini mushrooms or whatever like that. Yeah. And let's go buy the nice cut of beef and like, let's get good stuff. Yeah. Because uh, you just, you know, you, you know, stuff. it's going to be good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that was my one of my favorite stuff this year. Awesome, Chris. All right, Tasha, back to you. Um, I guess the second thing for me is uh, obviously my brother and I were we started our own business, and 2017 was like our second 
year, I guess. Yeah, in second business. year in business, yeah. And uh, there's been a lot of a lot of growth there for us, uh, just <clears throat> like learning to be business owners and learning to do sales and to handle sales calls. Um, manage leads and just try to like strategize about the business. These are things that we've never really learned. Uh, we had to kind of learn trial by fire. Yeah. And um, so 2017 was kind of just a year of a lot of learning for us and um, learning to not be afraid of failure because that's the hardest thing because then we get paralyzed. We're just like, oh, no, we can't do it. And so then we just don't do it. Yep. Uh, so we've had to learn to just kind of punch through that. I keep on using that phrase. Punch but through that. <laughs> we, we've had to learn to really just work past that and just keep going um, and just try and experiment. Like in the end, all of this is an experiment. We have to be able to just kind of let that be and just do what we want to do. And yeah, we need courage. We have had to <laughs> learn a lot of courage. Yeah, I drink out of this cup regularly. Yeah, yeah. yeah the cup liquid of courage. courage. Yeah. Liquid courage. Uh, I don't think it's liquid courage. Though. That wouldn't help the business. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, I was about to ask one question for you, Tosh, is was there a defining moment that you realized we have to just do this and we can't be afraid? Or was this something that like reoccurred from time to time you just kind of like built up your courage meter as so to speak <laughs> um i don't know i i think it's like all, these obstacles kind of come at us one at a time and then we we get into this place where it's like oh no do we really want to do this like do, do we really want to try to like fight through this but obviously like you know we feel like this is something that god has called us to and so it's like well if that's the case and you know we know his promises that he's that he is with us right so then it's like these things that we want to try to do, we can go and do. We don't have to be afraid of, you know, the consequences necessarily. Like, if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. If it does work out, great. Uh, but in the end, like, there's room for, for us to just, you know, try to learn and experiment with these things and to uh, just gain more experience through doing them. If we didn't do them, then we wouldn't gain any experience and, you know, we would just kind of be stuck with where we were. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. it's just kind of every single time that there's something new that comes up, we've had to like go through that process of like, do we really want to do this? Yes, we do want to do this. And, yeah. you know, we don't have to be too worried about what's going to happen. Like if things fail, we have to fix it. Or, you know, the business doesn't work out, the business doesn't work out. But what have we learned and, you know, how can we see in the past you know, God working through all of that and up to where we are and, you know. Mm -hmm. I would, I would, if I were to tie it to some religious language, I would almost say that startups, they, they thrive on grace. Mm -hmm. Like they need so much grace. And some people talk about runway and everything like that. Some people talk about, you know, key performance indicators and metrics and stuff. But just because of all the mistakes you have to make, because of all the times when you're going to fail, startups need so much grace, both internally, like for ourselves and within the team, but also with customers and partners. And mm -hmm. the truth is that not everybody's ready for that. Not everybody is going to be the right kind of customer who like gives you that grace to, so they also succeed and you could succeed together. Mm -hmm. But when you find those people, it's amazing because you guys, it's really kind of serving one another. You really are helping your customers and they're also helping you. Um, and that and getting more and more of those kind of gracious customer relationships, I think, is what can help a startup in particular thrive. You know, once you become an Apple, everybody just expects everything out of you. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, it's just, it, the game changes. But when you're a startup, you can't survive without that kind of grace that, that our customers and other people kind of give you. So you can figure things out. Mm -hmm. It creates that space where you can figure it out as you go um, and still serve them, you know, still help, still help meet their needs. Mm. So, yep. yeah. But it's hard to believe that we live in a world of grace, I would say. Like, yeah. 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 The fear of failure, the fear of rejection, all those things are driven by this assumption that the world ultimately is a very, very like, ungracious, unforgiving place. place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it takes faith to be able to still go at it and, yeah. you know, pursue uh, what we think God called us to. <clears throat> at least you guys are still standing here. <laughs> We're still alive! <laughs> That's a miracle! <laughs> Chris, it's back to you, man. You want to, sk you're skipping your turn now. Okay. Oh, is it back to me? <laughs> That's okay. I made it I weird. I keep thinking it's going this way. Okay, uh, okay. so it seems like okay. Tied to that, I'll, I'll talk just, about. I'm gonna switch it. Like my big, like I think that what I'm really happy about is like uh, even though Theotech and our product Spiffio for real time translation is not wildly successful yet. Like you know, it's not mm -hmm. like the next big IPO of the year. 
But this year, I think that uh, we've it's grown so much. Like I look yeah. back at where we started, uh, where it was still all based off only prepared manuscripts and translations, to now where everything can be automatic and on the fly, and uh, that's pretty amazing in the course of a year. Yeah. Um, and I think tied to that is not just the product side, but it's also the product market fit. Or <clears throat> basically, as we've been working with some of our customers, and you know, we're starting with churches first because we would like churches to have a foretaste of God's kingdom every Sunday. People from many languages can worship together and do so seamlessly uh, through our technology. And so by working with some of our church customers, we've gotten it to the point now where we're seeing it deliver that value and they kind of want to keep doing it. And that's a great sign. And they're also paying us for it. So that's a great sign because it means that we validated that the product is delivering value. It's really making a difference and helping. And then we also have found some product market fit because people are using it successfully and they're, they're willing to pay for it because it's really helping them do what they are called to do. So that is like the big thing I'm thankful for for our business in this past year uh, is that the product and the market have kind of grown together to that point where we see it making a difference. We see it uh, changing what people are even thinking about as possible now. Um, just this past Christmas Eve, we had several churches that did their worship services in multiple languages. Um, and that was that was really exciting. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> plug it, plug it real quick. SPF.io. SPF.io. You can read more, it. watch the videos of it in action, <clears throat> and maybe think about, you know, what could be possible if your church could welcome people in any language every single Sunday with only a marginal extra effort on the on the team that you know, puts on the worship service. Yeah. Uh, it's <clears throat> it's gonna, I think it's gonna really, it could transform, if God wills, it could transform churches in America or around the world to where you can go to any church and really any any language could be available uh, there. And you can start seeing communities that are united by Christ and not really segregated by language uh, and culture. We'll see. Can be used outside the church too. If you just need an event with multilingual too, right? Alan's a good salesperson, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Of course. Anytime you got language barriers, just go to SPF.io. See if their solution is right for you. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks, Alan. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. This, this whole thing really is just a plug because I'm going to be my own plug and let you guys know that um, for the past like couple of years, I've been trying to do content creation. Um, and I've been trying to like find where my niche really is. So I started with music. I, I grew up playing music and uh, that evolved to podcasting. So if you see some of our older videos, you'll see me in it. Uh, <laughs> uh, that go that went into like video stuff. I tried doing YouTube for a bit. Um, that didn't really work. I mean, there's no really way to like not work in YouTube, right? You just maybe don't meet your goals. Yeah, I didn't blow up, let's just say that. Okay, um, not, enough, not enough subscribes or views. Yeah, not, not enough subs. <laughs> not enough subs. Um, <laughs> but really, this past year, I've been focusing on one particular content creation, which is uh, photography. So I have stepped up my Instagram game, and here's my plug, TWAWNG, to along. Uh, if you go there, that's my Instagram page. I broke 600 yesterday. Nice. Wow. Like, <clears throat> not really a milestone. I think like a thousand. I think might be like the next that's a milestone. Big, next milestone yeah. yeah. But I uh, I doubled my Instagram followers within a month by posting twice a day. And that uh -huh. was a lot of work because I like 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. every day. I set alarms for myself and like. I post, and I mean, like, I know there's apps that allow you to do that automated, like automatically, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just like not up to the times yet. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I'm also the uh, content provider for my church, Marketplace Church. You can visit them at like Marketplace TB T T B D T B <laughs> downtown Bellevue. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Marketplace DTB, okay. Yep. And then also, I am one of the content managers at Ceaseless Prayer, which is an app that you guys made. It's a prayer app. Uh, you can follow them on Instagram, Ceaseless Prayer. Um, I also, I think, doubled their follower, your guys' followers, from like 70 to 150. Yeah, in like a month, a month and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, things are looking up for photography. Um, outside of that, I do like shoots for events. So anything from like corporate event, nightlife, wedding, all that stuff. Uh, I've been getting enough traction to shoot about once a week. So that's on top of my full-time job. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> definitely had been experiencing a lot, learning a lot in terms of photography. And also, if this podcast looks familiar, it's because I'm actually producing it now. So I'm usually behind the camera, but... This time it's a little special because we're recapping the end of the year. 
Um, and I'm in front. <laughs> in front of the camera. Yeah. And you used to be on the podcast anyways. I used yeah. to be. It's not, it's not that weird. So here's the backstory. It used to be a lot of work because I would set everything up and I didn't have any of these like expensive lights or equipment. Like obviously it looks a lot better because I actually bought lights and they make us look so fan- much better. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I was like, like bomb, oh, fantastic. Okay. They make us look fantastic. These audio mics are like kind of expensive. Um <clears throat> and one one of the hardest things we had on the podcast was uh, was planning because I would set everything up and then uh, basically Chris and I would just look at each other and be like, "What are we talking about?" <laughs> and then we were like, uh, "I don't know. Let's let's just like wing it." And so we went like we wing <laughs> we wing it. <laughs> we had topics. We, we just yeah. had topics. We didn't do any like research. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so basically, it came down to. Uh, a point where I was like, yo, if we really want to move the game up, like, I just want to really focus on production, and I'll let you focus on content, and then we'll bring, like, guests and stuff like that, and so, this season of the podcast, if it looks a lot different, it feels a lot different, it's because we took it in, in a different direction, and I think it's working out, so. I think part of it has also been, uh, in the <clears throat> beginning, it was like a hobby where we were just, like, shooting the breeze and filming that, mm-hmm. but now I think there's a little bit more purpose, and we're finding more of the message that we want to share. And um, I don't have a nice pithy summary, but I can explain a little bit, which is that we want to help inspire people with the stories of what God is doing in and through the tech industry, just sharing those stories wherever and however they're happening. Uh, And so that's what we want to do this coming season. So the third, my third thing for myself is I had set a goal to read like 19 books this year. Um, And I actually met that goal. I beat that goal. I read. Very good. I read 20, I think I read 20 books, oh. 21 maybe. If I can finish this one book before, <clears throat> you know, within these next few days, then mm. I can exceed it. But uh, yeah, I, I actually, I was surprised because um, basically in, in previous years, like basically ever since I had left, you, you know, ever since I graduated from UW, I had not really been able to read, I felt like. Like, I, would, uh, I wouldn't I would be able to read for fun. Mm. Like, if I was reading, it was mostly emails, and it wasn't anything that I would think is interesting. Or like news articles. Yeah, or like news articles, or just whatever mm-hmm. you find on the internet, but not like a, an actual book. And so this year, I had felt like, no, I need to, I need to read, I need to read books. And so I set a goal um, that I thought was kind of a challenge, but but doable still. And when I look back at all the books that I'd read, like I, I'm on Goodreads, so I could tr- oh. keep track of the books that I read. Mm-hmm. And when I go back and I look, I'm like, oh, interesting. Like I had a variety of books. So like there are the business books that are about like, you know, sales and marketing and business strategy. And then there's other books like fiction or like, you know, um, classics like Little Women. Uh, and like I discovered the author Brand- Brandon Sanderson that my friend recommended to me. And he's actually been a lot of fun to read. But mm. I've only read a couple, uh, but he's been fun. And so it's just cool to see like all the different kinds of books that I've read. And yeah, I don't know. You have a very balanced literary diet. Yeah, well, I don't know about <laughs> balanced. Like they're just very different. Like I think that there's other things that I probably should read. Like I know you've read, like you've been reading some biography, which I never choose to read. I'm reading about the Wright brothers. It was recommended, uh, the book by David McCullough. It was recommended by a researcher at Microsoft, and uh, he was just really inspired by the story about how these two brothers, uh, who really had no formal education or anything, or, or the resources that everybody else had, just kind of tirelessly experimented and tinkered and until they actually discovered a way to fly. Um, and uh, I, I read it under his recommendation. I'm, I'm really enjoying it because sometimes Natasha and I, I think with Theotech, we feel kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> just, we're just these two siblings. Like the only difference that we have is we just have this like grit to like just make it work, just figure out how to get this AI going uh, and how to get it to actually serve the customer's need. And that's um, so it's really inspiring to read that story uh, and and kind of learn from their experience. You're but also a lot smarter right brothers, yeah. than the Wright brothers too. You both are smarter than your sibling, the Lim siblings. Are smarter than the Wright brothers. I don't know why you say smarter, except maybe because like we had so many years, that said decades between us. So yeah, technically we're smarter because we've learned from humanity's knowledge in sure. that time. But uh, yeah, so. But what's That's the book that you liked, especially Brian Sanderson? You said. Well, Brandon Sanderson. Brandon? I read one of his books. I want to read this other one called Mistborn. I think that I hear everybody. Really Everybody's likes. talking about Mistborn. But I haven't. I haven't 
been able to get that from the library. Uh, but I would say, okay, some of the highlights are Five Dysfunctions of a Team. That's the book that you we recommended. Read, uh, which our friend gave us, yeah. Which our friend gave us. Yeah, that one was a really good book. It's like kind of a business parable. Fable. Oh, yeah, fable. Like, fable. Yeah, parable. Um, so it's not like necessarily an actual story, but it's definitely realistic enough that you could see it happening. Um, and that one was really interesting, just insights into, you know, how do you manage conflict in a team and like the different kinds of dysfunctions that come up. I can't tell them to you right now because I don't remember because I read it <laughs> at the beginning of the year. But I just remember like after reading that book, it was it was like, oh, you know, there is actually this emotional organizational health that's possible, but it requires work. Mm. Um, so that was one good book that I read. Another one was Little Women. That's uh, an old book that I actually reread because... When I first read it, that was, I don't know, fourth grade. Mm. Uh, but that book is just really meaningful to me. I think it's more meaningful to me now than it was when I was in fourth grade. Probably because there's more life experience that I can draw on and see like, oh, you know. Oh, man, life is so much more meaningful once you've lived through a few more years. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's those are the two, like, two highlights. Another one that I read was The Next Worship uh, by oh, Sandra Maria Van Opstel. Um, and it was really cool to hear her speak, actually, at uh, Christ and Cascadia's Worship of the Arts Conference that happened in February of 2017. So that's also what kind of prompted me to read her book. Um, that one was a really good one just to, to you know, it's good for us, like, especially with Spiffio, to know, like, there are people out there who care about, um, you know, having multicultural, multilingual worship services already uh, without necessarily having to use... Um, the cutting edge of technology. You know, there's ways to incorporate languages in a worship service without needing necessarily to, you know, go out and try to, like, dig up some deep cultural thing. Like, actually, if you just look around at your church, you probably have diversity there already. Mm. And it's just kind of recognizing that and, you know, incorporating that into the worship service so that everybody can can um, experience this unity in Christ uh, that's beyond just, you know, the surface level majority culture. Yeah, I think the last thing for me, uh, and something a little more personal, like, okay, so I don't work with Theotech, so like, sometimes I don't, I don't need to like, talk about Theotech all the time. But I guess something personal for me is uh, I started seeing a counselor for pretty much the last half of this year. Mm. Um, and it's something, actually it's something that I do talk a lot about if people are interested in listening to it. Like I've told them about it. I think the only people I haven't really told about is uh, my parents, but it's okay, they'll find out eventually. <laughs> um, uh, but They're gonna yeah. watch this and find out. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, like, hey dad. I think you should watch this podcast. <laughs> I'll link it to them on Facebook. There you like, go. Hey, I made a podcast. You should watch it. Um, it's been really helpful. Um, I think the main thing about seeing a counselor or therapist mm -hmm. is that they're able to provide an unbiased perspective that mm -hmm. most people don't have because a lot of my friends or family will already have perceived biases when it comes to advice or suggestions and stuff like that. So it's really nice to have someone that's outside of that whole realm uh, looking into kind of my world and seeing some of the assumptions that I've made uh, that may or may not be true or some of the things that I believe that may, again, may or may not be true. Um, and uh, there's definitely a lot I can talk about in terms of just like mental health and all this stuff. But uh, tying it back to faith and technology, um, mm. I do want to do another episode later this year uh, about mental awareness or mental, mental health, health awareness. Yeah. Yeah, and how it ties into um, technology and the gospel. And we've been talking about that. Uh, I have a few friends who are in the uh, counseling uh, realm. Um, and that would be kind of fun. I want to invite them to the show, yeah. That'd yeah. be really cool. And I also know that there was like this one nonprofit. Uh, it's not a Christian one. It's just open sourcing mental mental health or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a real serious problem in the tech industry, especially that um, yeah. uh, you know I think everyone's concerned about. And so it would be it would be great a great topic for a future mm -hmm. episode. Um, cool. Yeah. So I guess the third the, my third thing that that I am truly grateful for. Um, is that we, my sister and I, have found kind of a church home where we're settling into, and it's Union Church. 
uh, down in South Lake Union in the heart of Amazon's campus, so the location's strategic. And during the week, it's actually a cafe called Kakeo. And so we've done things, different uh, different events there. Um, but what I'm so grateful for, actually, was that I just recently had breakfast with uh, one of the pastors there. And it was the first time in probably like 10 years or five years that I felt pastored. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just that time where you're like, you know, you're just talking heart to heart. Maybe it's a little bit like counseling, but it's a little bit different and yeah. sharing life together. And I just, uh, I was just really grateful for that time. And I think that it's one of the things that I've been missing. And uh, tying it to even like faith and tech and, you know, one of the episodes we did with Jesse about pastoring one another in the workplace, even mm-hmm. like I feel like as, a, as an entrepreneur of a small startup um, where we're outside of even the Amazon ecosystem, it can be really hard because you just feel like you have to do all the time. Yeah. And there's nobody there who's just like there to like pastor you there. or support you or like listen to your problems and like, you know, pray for you in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, you just... Yeah. So it's, it's been, that's been cool. And we're hoping that for other people in kind of my position, I guess, other entrepreneurs, other people in the smaller context, we're hoping to do something in this coming year to have that regular community and kind of mutual support um, uh, somehow. I don't know what the answer is yet, but mm-hmm. it's something I'm looking forward to and uh, something I'm grateful for. Mm. Thanks. All right. So Ooh. I guess I just kind of combined top <laughs> my top three with one thing I hope for in the new year. I just combined yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, I saw. Oh, there you go. There. No, I didn't even realize I was doing that. But um, <clears throat> imagine, like, imagine that, right? If not only in Seattle, but in communities all around the world, people in the tech industry and even outside of the tech industry who might be kind of isolated right now, they can find that um, that kind of Christian community where it's not just you know just not just a small group or worship service or whatever, but really we all understand because we're all in the trenches together. You know, we feel all the same kind of hardships of being an entrepreneur being a techie or whatever like that. And we are praying for one another, supporting one another to live out our faith mm-hmm. and bear witness that way in, in the places where God has put us. Like if that could kind of regular community could happen. I think it would be a big service to, you know, not only Christians, but to the world really. Mm-hmm. Um, and also a big uh, help, a big help for us. Yeah. So that's one thing I hope for in the new year that we can be a part of and, and help initiate too. Cool. So. Are we going in reverse? You go next. <laughs> um, I... I'm not prepared for this question. Okay, I'll, I'll go next. I'll, I'll go next. Um, we're going in reverse, guys. So I think one thing, <laughs> one thing I would like to see in the new year, um, I think definitely one is to continue to grow as a content creator. Uh, you know, doing like music. So I want to. <laughs> there's so many things I want to do. <laughs> Um, top I want, ten. <laughs> like, top ten. A top ten within a top three. Oh, we got that. That's um, cheating. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I still want to do music. Um, that hasn't left. Like I didn't do anything music related this year, but I, I do want to get back to it. Um, obviously, like producing this podcast and like producing other podcasts too. Like um, I might want to start my own. Like I don't know if I do. This guy's gonna be on it. Like these people, because. Uh, they're awesome, and I want them to talk more about their company and their experiences. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Alan. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I want to get into, like, web development. I want to do more photography. Um, video, like, that's still kind of in the air. I, I want to get better at becoming a video editor. Uh, that would definitely help in terms of producing this podcast and, like, producing other stuff that I do. Um, <clears throat> but that's, you know, that's my creative stuff that I want to do. And then, I guess, in terms of just work, just, like, continue to do that yeah <laughs> but it sounds like you want to be like leonardo da vinci you want to be like a renaissance man that could do everything in the creative basically, world basically yeah but you actually want to create do you want to do everything or do you want to create a company that does everything uh both, both. I think. okay i eventually like i want to get to a place where i can just wake up one day and just like decide what to do then and just do it like, so like, i don't Casey have... Base, uh, I don't know. Oh, not Casey. Okay. <laughs> Casey does like everything all the time. Every day. <laughs> okay, so that's been that's too much. Like, yeah, that's like insane. I mean, that's kind of cool to do, maybe like now, but like definitely not in like twenty years. Yeah, that'd be oh. too much. Overwhelming. <laughs> but yeah, stay tuned. I'll plug whatever I'm doing in the future. All right, Tasha's turn. Um, I guess for me, I think it's. Uh, I don't know. I would say that for myself, I want to continue to grow in um, overcoming the fears that I have uh, and uh, just kind of maturing in being an adult. (laughs) I don't know. Adulting. In adulting. Like, (laughs) I feel like for the longest time, I have felt like I'm like 
always like a teenager. Maybe it's partially because, you know, one, I'm short and I am Asian. Uh, and so whenever somebody just kind of glances at me, they, they assume that I am like 16. Maybe it's just like a part of me has always felt like, oh, because I can get away with appearing like a 16 year old, then you know, you should. Like, then I, can, I can continue to just kind of feel like that. But it's like, no, you know, I'm an adult and being an adult is kind of just, you know, regardless of what the other people think of you, you go and you, I don't know, like do, do the things that you feel like you need to do. I guess. Being responsible? Yeah, just kind of like being responsible, taking initiative. taking initiative, like being your own person almost. Yeah, um, that's huge. <laughs> so, so it's like, I mean, that's, that's kind of you know, this weird, is, but... This is interesting for us because I feel like um, we are Asian and then we grow and then we went into the tech industry, right? So you kind of get well paid. And I feel like there's just like in the Asian world, there's just like a really... Uh, deficient definition of adulthood or maturity, which is basically like you have enough money to support yourself, mm -hmm. which is an important component of being a, an adult, but it's not everything, right? And so it's just kind of like um, we, we got to that point where we could support ourselves, but we still weren't actually that mature, responsible enough to like, I'm going to decide this and do that and initiate this. And like, yeah. I'm not stressed out over that. I'll just take responsibility. Like we never like, yeah. grew up to that and point. It's kind of like, what is adulthood, right? Because we think adulthood is like, oh, that you can take care of yourself. Mm. And like, oh, and then you check off the box. Oh, I own a car. I own a house. Right. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, you know, those are just things. Yeah. I'm, I'm an adult, but I don't own a car and I don't own a house. So it's like, what is you know where where am I basically? I'm not I'm not meeting these milestones that people say are like the marks of adulthood. So I'm like, what does this mean? Well, Asians would say that you get married and then that's when you're an adult, quote unquote. Yeah, well, so that's we actually we're really behind that. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say this would be a really good podcast episode. I, it would if be you, like bringing you two back what is, what and talk about the tech podcast adults yes. hashtag adulting yeah <laughs> adulting. Yeah, it. yeah for all you millennials out there we feel your pain we were one yeah. of you yeah. <laughs> we went, even though we're like 10 years old <laughs> uh, oh my gosh you're gonna enjoy your 30s though because you're gonna look like 20s and everyone's gonna look like 40s. you know that's what everybody says but i'm just like i haven't hit that moment yet I know, so how do okay, i enjoy my wait. life now you know mm, being grateful for the present is yeah. true great well, thank you for joining us on today's episode of the Theotech Podcast. I hope you had fun. We certainly did. And uh, yeah, tell us, what are your three grateful memories for this past year? What's your one hope for the new year? And uh, we'd just love to connect with you guys about that. And other than that, God bless. Happy New Year. Confetti! Happy new year. <sighs> If you'd like to support the Theotech Podcast as we try to share stories about what God is doing in and through the tech industry, you can support us on Patreon here, or you can also just subscribe to our channel here right above my head or on my head just like smack on my head have an awesome end of the year <laughs> happy new year happy new year <laughs>